Hey there everybody, welcome back to Clean Valley Farms. I am JT Bear and today I am finally putting together my first worm farm. So stick around and we'll see how this works out. I'm sure there will be changes and upgrades along the way, but that's just how I do things, isn't it? All right, let's get started. Conveniently enough, I have a couple of Rubbermaids kicking around and one of them was even Shox's worm farm that I stole back when I discovered all the worms were long since dead and decided to use for planting. But anyway, now it's going unused at the moment. So back to worm farm. Got another tote here without holes. This is going to be my bottom. This is just a super basic setup. I'm not doing anything fancy like a flow through or self harvesting or any of the stuff I've been watching today. But I will in the future. This is just getting them started. Because a gentleman in my community here, I love this little village we live in, was kind enough to drop off basically a starter kit of worms for me when he discovered that I was interested in doing some worm farming but didn't have any on the go. I love people here, so friendly. So that basically leaves me in a position of, well, I guess I better put something together with what I've got right now. Right? Generally like I do things. <laughs> Alright, anyway, carrying on. For bedding in this particular worm farm, I just went out to the compost and uh, grabbed some of what has thawed from the lawn clippings as of last year. Still a little cold there, but I was able to pull them up. It should be a nice, reasonable bedding, fairly natural approach. I'm just going to dump this into the one with the holes in it so it don't get moisture build up and all that jazz. Really, I'm just going to dump it too because, you know, really. Okay, how pretty do the worms need it, you know? I should probably let this warm up for a little bit before I put the worms in it, so I think I'll continue this video in about half an hour or so, because that is still some incredibly cold lawn clippings. Next, I'll just nestle that into the tote without holes, double check, make sure. Yeah, there's still plenty of uh, room for air to circulate through there. Now, as I recall, there were, were a few things with this setup that were somewhat problematic. I believe it created a suction and didn't want to separate, and you know, just a few little issues. So I will be making some upgrades to this. I will, of course, be putting those in video form to share for feedback. I saw a great reno on one of these setups from, I believe it was, One Yard Revolution, making it into a flow-through bed with some uh, PVC pipes to hold it up there. Kind of like that idea. Might go there. We shall see, of course. Not quite warm enough. Wait a little longer. Well, now that I can't feel any little grass icebergs in there, I'm just going to dump this right over. Well, there's some of the worms right there. Excellent, excellent. Well, big guy, I don't know if you're watching the videos or not, but uh, huge thank you. Looking forward to uh, developing this into a nice substantial worm colony. See how the bottom of the bucket looks there. Not too many stuck in there. I'll just have to clean that out. There's one already escaping into the bedding, trying to get away from the light. Another one, so there's a few active worms in here. This is from the worm farm that he has going in his basement, so he warned me they may basically still be in hi hibernation mode because it's kind of cool down in his basement. But I imagine that'll change now that they're up here in the green room. Things are a little bit warmer here. But I believe these are the red wriggler worms. We'll keep this guy up too long. I know they don't really like the light. My inner child always loves watching a worm wiggle though. Alright, back to the soil for you. And I'll just throw the lid on it. Now I've seen uh, a lot of people drilling holes 
in the top of the lids. Seems like a pretty good idea, but I will spare you the annoying sound of the drill. So there you go, no real rhyme or reason to it, just randomly drilled a bunch of little tiny holes in there for air. It'll work just fine, I'm sure. And we just put the lid back on. Good to go. All right. So, as I understand it, there's a rather lengthy list of things that you definitely should not be putting into your worm bin. Um, I am... I'm trying to track it down, but I, I haven't found all that much of a comprehensive list yet. If you uh, have anything that you absolutely know should not be going into a worm compost, put it down in the comments below. I'd greatly appreciate the tip, as always. And uh, otherwise, we're pretty much going to go with things like coffee grounds, uh, tea, carrot tops, celery, just little things like that. And we're going to try and avoid things like... Uh, onion peels and I believe orange peels are pretty much useless in any kind of composting situation although I understand goats will eat them so I guess that's one way to compost an orange peel but uh, yeah pro banana peels right they can go in there I don't know I'll do a little bit more YouTube research before I put too much in here I do plan on basically blending up and uh, well food processing the, the food that I put in there just to make it a little easier, a little faster. It's a very small worm colony I've got right now, so I don't imagine they're going to be able to eat too much just yet. But it will be curious to watch them kind of grow and develop and uh, hopefully become a much larger colony. Alright everybody, thank you very much for joining me today. As I said, if you have any uh, comments, concerns, I don't know, words of wisdom or words of caution, please throw them down in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And have yourselves an absolutely fantastic day, everybody. I'll see you next time.